The heavy bag is possibly the most recognizable piece of equipment in the sport of boxing. Its ease of use can mask a lot of the issues, uh, pitfalls and mistakes and bad habits a developing fighter can pick up if they're using it, not being mindful. Consider this your education on how to avoid these traps and use the heavy bag effectively so that you can have success when you fight. The heavy bag isn't a complex piece of equipment, but its simplicity lends to its versatility. You can use the bag as a conditioning tool. You can use it to drill techniques. You can use it to practice punch mechanics and timing your hips. to practice specific technical sequences. You can use it for very sport specific strength training. And all of these drills and techniques have their place in the training of a skilled boxer. But the heavy bag is best used as a tool for fight simulation. You don't just want to be punching the bag, you want to be boxing the bag. Offense, defense, movement, rhythm, it should all be present. The heavy bag forces you to account for position, distance, timing, punch selection, and gives you feedback on the quality of your shots. The value of the heavy bag to replicate a fight is dependent on your focus and your ability to hold yourself to a strict standard when you're training on it. So let's talk about what should be on your mind when using the heavy bag. Don't slap the bag. Modern boxing gloves are very accommodating for poorly structured punches. With this glove, I can hit with the back of the glove, I can hit with the thumb, I can hit with my door knocking knuckles, and I'm not usually punished for that. You see this a lot when people are throwing hooks on the bag. They slap. They make contact with this part of the glove. And it sounds good, but if you didn't have this glove protecting you, I can't throw like this without injuring my thumb, without injuring my hand, and I'm not gonna be delivering as much force. I think it's really important that when you're hitting the bag, you are always landing with these two knuckles, your index and your middle knuckle. This is not only gonna make you structure your shots better, but it's also more realistic if you ever have to use your boxing in a self-defense situation or in an MMA context. To help me feel this with my structure, my mechanics, and my distance, I like to warm up nice and light on the bag before I do my bag work with a round of bare knuckle work. So it's not truly bare knuckle, I have my wraps on, they're giving me support through my hand and through my wrist, but I'm just thinking about spiking with these knuckles. <sighs> and making proper, strong contact on the bag, so even though the gloves will forgive me, I want to imagine that when I'm throwing punches. Don't stop the bag. So what I mean by don't stop the bag, if the bag is swinging, don't catch it and stop it before throwing punches. If you want to control the movement of the bag, you should be using your jab or using your frames. If I'm working on the bag, and the bag's moving a bunch, I can use my jab to stop that movement. Or I can use a frame to stop that movement. Or best yet, I can be the matador and I can dance with the bag and make sure that its movement isn't an issue, but it's an accessory to help me be mobile. Not hooking on the line isn't just a tactic that you should employ and be mindful of. It's also a structural issue when it comes to hitting the bag. If I'm hooking on the line, standing head on to the bag and throwing these kind of goofy 45 degree shots out, I'm not putting myself in the best position to accelerate or to structure that shot. Anytime I'm throwing a hook, I should be throwing a hook at the far side of my body. So what I mean by that is, if I'm throwing a right hook, it's going to something on my left side. If I'm throwing a left hook, it's the opposite. 
So if I want to set up my right hook, I either need to take a lane to put the bag on my left side so that I can hit it, or I need to take an angle to put the bag on my left side so I can hit it. Instead of standing straight onto the bag and throwing this goofy 45 degree shot out, where if I had a real opponent in front of me, I'd be punching right into their guard. Whether they duck, roll, or slip, or just lift their guard up, they're protected from a shot that comes out at 45 degrees like this. There is value in me committing to attacking their center line or attacking over their shoulder because it means that they have to commit to defending in a specific manner. They can't just use any defense to keep themselves safe. So in a real fight, if I wanted to hit my opponent to the body, I wouldn't do it like this. Because when I'm punching straight down like that, I'm leaving my face vulnerable, and this isn't an especially well-structured shot. If I want to hit the body, I need to change levels to do so. If I want to hit the body, I got to drop down to do that. So I'm out of the line of fire for a return shot, and I've structured my punch better to deliver that force. In addition to this, one of the bad habits that people fall into is throwing everything at shoulder and chest level. When they're on the bag, they have these kind of lazy punches that just mill out right in front of their chest. It's really important to remember, if you're fighting somebody taller than you, you need to be able to generate force slightly up. And you don't want to get stuck tiring those arms out, punching up, because you never conditioned them properly in the gym when you should have. One of the bad habits people pick up on the bag is taking angles that are too wide. They feel like the bag is this big immovable object and they don't try to move through it like you're supposed to do in a fight with your opponent. They try to move around it and attack its center line. So the wrong way to do this, big step out, pivot, throwing straight punches. Big step over, pull, throwing straight punches. When in reality, you want to attack an opponent's center line first when you take an angle. So the proper way to do this isn't this, it's this. It's not this, it's this. The only time you get to finish a combo on offense is when your opponent is horizontal. If they're still vertical and standing in front of you, you should be finishing your combos on defense with movement, having an exit strategy. A lot of people stand in front of the bag, they move in, bop, bop, they deliver a shot, bop, bop, and then they just stand here. That doesn't train the right habit. Every single exchange in a fight should have a technique that gets you into the exchange, some techniques that deliver force, and a technique that safely exits the exchange. This would look better like this. Or this. Where I create a breakaway moment and I exit range. Lots of people have this bad habit of no matter what distance they actually are to the bag, they just stand in their outside guard. You need to choose the right guard and the right stance for the right position. I think that you should practice all three distances on the bag, the outside, the middle distance, and the inside. When I'm on the outside, I'm using my jab and my cross, I'm using distance as my first line of defense, and I'm sticking and moving. When I'm in the middle distance, I have my high guard up, I'm controlling lanes and angles, I'm hooking and attacking the body all from my high guard. And when I'm fighting on the inside, I wanna have my left shoulder against the bag. I'm pushing, shoving, using my shoulder, my head, my elbow, my frames to create space, hitting and then closing that distance. Rough and tumble, push and shove.
probably the biggest mistake that people make on the bag is they jump into the bag, they dive into the bag, they throw themselves into the bag, and they let the bag hold them up. Whereas if they were sparring with somebody and they punch with those mechanics, they'd fall through, they'd be ass over elbows, it's very inefficient from a energy standpoint, and they leave themselves vulnerable to getting countered. So I see a lot of this. where guys throw themselves at the bag, and if they actually did that, they'd be falling through. They'd be off balance. I see the opposite problem when people do too much shadow boxing, where they don't put any hip or any power into their shots. They just float their hands out. Here's the truth. A good opponent is gonna make you miss, and you need to hit a good opponent hard to make them respect you. So it's important that whether I'm hitting the bag or whether I'm missing the bag, my punch mechanics look exactly the same. When I'm on the bag, nice strong two. When I'm off the bag, nice strong two. On, off, on, off. If the only time you practice a technique is when you spar, then you are definitely not practicing it enough. But I see this a lot specifically with punching out of the high guard, slipping, moving, and defending out of the high guard. The only time people ever practice from this high guard position is when somebody forces them into that position in a fight. Well, when you're punching out of this high guard position, the structure on your punches is a little bit different, the timing on your hips is a little bit different, your balance is a little bit different, and if you don't practice this, then you're not gonna be able to do it when the pressure's on and you need to perform well. The only thing that truly is boxing is hard sparring and fighting. Everything else we're doing, every other training method, is an impression. It's what I call boxing adjacent. We believe that these impressions are good enough that their practice will improve your final performance, and that's why we select these things. But it goes without saying that you aren't punished for mistakes when you're hitting the bag the way you are when you're in a fight. And this can lead to the development of bad habits if you're not mindful with your techniques and tactics. There's a military term I love for this called training scars. Training scars are the lingering bad habits you pick up in training that get you in trouble on the battlefield. Some obvious training scars from the heavy bag are taking wide angles or falling in on your punches. But again, all training that isn't hard sparring or fighting can lead to bad habits. You can help to erase these bad habits by using a variety of training methods and complementary pieces of equipment. For example, doing a round of shadow boxing to complement every round of heavy bag work you do will help to stop you from falling in on your punches. Another immensely important note when it comes to heavy bag training is selecting the heavy bag that is the right size for you. A proper heavy bag should be about half of your weight. And this is because when you hit the bag, the bag should move. If you're a 150 pound guy hitting a 200 pound bag, the bag's not gonna move when you slam that punch into it, but your shoulder and your low back are. They're gonna yield, they're gonna give, they might even break or get damaged because that force that isn't moving the bag has to go somewhere. I know lots of talented young athletes that get derailed, that get little hurdles earlier in their career because they're hitting bags that are too heavy for them, too hard, and they're not positioning themselves correctly to throw proper punches. A final tip that I use to make my bag work more dynamic and engaging is to put targets on the bag. This helps me practice my precision, my patience, and my punch position in a more fight real manner. The way that I like to lay out my targets is I like to set them up front of head, sides of head, solar plexus, ribs, liver, and I try to structure this according to my height when I'm standing so that when I settle into my boxing stance, I'm fighting an opponent who's slightly larger than me. You always hope you get to be the bigger guy, but you should plan for the worst case scenario. 
please share my channel and my videos with any fighters or fight fans in your life. Please engage in the comment section and let me know videos that you would like to see me make in the future or other boxing YouTubers you'd like me to fight. And stay tuned for more videos to help you succeed when you fight. All right, we ready? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna need that glove. I'm sorry. Rolling. Don't roll. I'm gonna roll over and die if I don't get more coffee. <laughs> Leave me alone. I know what you're up to. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, we're going. <laughs> 